start recording. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Here, let me just make sure we are good on all of our cameras. Hello, everyone. Welcome to UV Resin Excitement Day. We are making jewelry with UV Resin. And if you have never done that before, it is so fun and is instant and you're going to love it. So we're going to walk you through all the steps from be being a complete beginner to jewelry making or a complete beginner to resin crafting to making several pairs of earrings um, within just one hour. So let's get started. Uh, a couple notes of caution about your workspace and safety. So first of all, if you have a um, sensitivity to resin or an allergy, you do want to wear gloves, work in a well-ventilated area, and you don't want to be near an open window. So this is the product that we're talking about today. This is UV resin. It comes in a little bottle like this. And if you've ever done any other kind of resin crafting, usually it comes in two bottles and you have to very carefully measure and mix them together. This is not that. This is a new technology that is already ready to go. It pours out completely ready to go into a mold or into a bezel. And that is how you start making jewelry with it. It cures in UV light. So that UV light comes from either a lamp or sunlight. It cures in sunlight, which is really cool. So you have a really long working time. It will stay in its liquid form until you are ready to cure it. So you can come back to it the next day. It'll still be liquid until you introduce UV light to it. All right, so let's switch to the other camera right here. This is some of the jewelry that we're gonna be making today. Um, let me turn on this other light, get some light on it. So we're gonna be making some different kinds of hoop earrings. So this sort of circle hoop, and then this kind of true hoop earring. This one has dried flowers in it. These other pieces have a glitter of all different colors in them. We have some stud earrings here. This one is a butterfly. And then we've got sort of this dangle earring shape made of three different colors of hearts. So we are, like I said, I'm gonna walk you through all the steps to do this. I encourage you to use the chat function if you have any questions so um, I can answer them. We have Anne-Marie Menlo who will be responding to your um, chats and um, I can answer your questions here live. And um, so I encourage you to do that. So let me clear the area here and let me first show you what we're working with in terms of our setup. So this is a silicone mat. It is a extra large silicone mat. This is the small silicone mat that's in stores. And this is the extra large one. And I'm gonna zoom this out a little bit so you can see. Um, this is a great mat just kind of to protect your work surface. Um, we are also going to be working with a UV lamp. As I said, this is our UV lamp. It's a little guy here. It plugs into a USB. And when you hit the button, let me turn it over so you can see that those lights, these are um, LED UV lights, uh, nine watts. I'm going to show you the package. This is what it looks like in stores. I like to show you what it looks like in stores because sometimes it might be hard to find, but this is the lamp in stores. comes in a couple different colors. And um, what else do we have? I have some silicone little bowls and some wood sticks. These are our, all part. Thank you, Rosa. These are all part of our mixing kit. This is what it looks like in stores. And that's how we're gonna mix glitter into the resin. We're gonna mix color into the resin by using this. And then we have our resin itself and we have molds. These are silicone molds. So all the projects that we're gonna be doing today use these three molds. So this first one is a stud earring mold. So you can see all the different shapes that it makes. This is what it looks like in stores. And you'll see that down behind the mold, you get a little package of findings in there. Those findings are the little earring findings that you need 
to turn what you cast here into an earring. So you can see it's just like a little flat pad. So I'll show you more about those Ooh, in a minute. Um, all right, so a word about molds. You'll notice that these silicone molds are very clear. You can see the bottom of it. And that when you're working with any type of UV product, having clear molds is very important because that UV light can penetrate all the way through your piece. You do not wanna use an opaque mold. There are plenty of silicone molds out there for candy and for different things. You do not wanna use anything that's opaque. All right, so let's just jump right in and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna start with a very simple project, which are these stud earrings. Um, and first, let me just give you a close-up look of this mold. Um, there are a lot of different shapes. For these basic shapes here, like these hexagons, you see they have different textures. Like this set of hexagons just has a flat bottom. This one has a faceted bottom. I don't know if you can see that. And then this one has a textured bottom to make like a druzy look. Here, you can kind of see that there. So, and then each earring has two spots for it. So you can make both pair, both of the pair at once. All right, so let's make some butterflies. So I have my silicone mixing cup. So you'll notice silicone is a theme and that is because resin doesn't stick to silicone when it, when it cures. All right, so I have my bottle of resin and I'm gonna go right into the cup. Here's my example here. I'll move that into the shot. Now I want to do a very light pink color. So I'm going to use a tint. There are a lot of ways to tint resin. This is sold at Michael's. Along Everything we're showing you is sold at Michael's, but these tints allow you obviously to create color. They are very, very concentrated. So when I add this in there here, I'll show you what it looks like in the stores. It comes in this three pack. So these are like primary colors that we're using. This is the pink. Thank you. Um, they're very concentrated. So when I add this, I'm gonna add just a tiny, I'm gonna shake it up. I'm gonna add just a tiny little drop. So this is one way to tint resin. You can also tint it by using mica powders, um, glitter, which we will be doing. Uh, you can tint it using a tiny bit of acrylic paint. Um, all right, so you can see I just put one drop in there. Let's mix it up and see what we have. This kind of very light, transparent pink color. And now, because who doesn't love glitter, let's add some. All right, so also at Michael's, obviously there are a lot of different kinds of glitter. We're gonna be using this kind of iridescent color. Let me just put a little bit of that in there. I always get asked how much glitter to add, um, as much as you want. You can add so much glitter to this and make it completely opaque. But this is kind of the thing I'm going for, which is a little more of a transparent. Okay, so now we have this mixed um, and I can just pour this directly into whatever shape I want. So let's go into the butterfly here. And you just fill it to the top. If you are not familiar with using molds, it is such a good way to make jewelry, particularly if you are making jewelry to sell it, because then you can be sure if it's coming out of a mold, it is gonna be uniform every single time. So if you are selling on Etsy, if you are selling at craft fairs, you can make sure that every pair of, every butterfly is uniform and the same. All right, so you can see, I'm just going in with my wood stick. And really that is just to make sure that the resin kind of got into all the little crevices. And I can also pick it up. I'm gonna pick it up out of the frame here and look underneath. And because it's clear, I can see through it. I can see if there's like an air pocket or anything under there that I don't want. And this one looks good. I'm actually gonna fill both of these. We'll do both at the same time. So let me fill its twin over here. Oh, 
Okay. All right, and then I always keep a paper towel off to the side just to wipe off my stick here. And I wanna show, I'm gonna bring this in really close, but I did get one bubble when I poured that. Do you see that bubble right there? So that is another question that we get is how to deal with bubbles. The best way if it's an air bubble like this is just to pop it. So I'm gonna to try to go in with my stick be gone, be gone bubble. And it's not wanting to pop for me. There it goes. All right, so you just kind of pop it. If you can't pop it, then what you can do is just kind of scoop it out. Like here, I got like a little mini bubble. I'm scooping it out. I'm wiping it on my um, paper towel. Here, I'm gonna scoop that one up too. But you can see generally that bubbles aren't really a problem with this kind of resin. Bubbles can be a problem with two-part resins because it creates bubbles as part of its sort of like chemical reaction that's happening. But ours, uh, the only bubbles that are there are just air bubbles. And air bubbles can happen, um, for example, as I was mixing as I was mixing in my cup I'm kind of like mixing I'm whipping in some air that can happen um, if you are pouring out of the bottle and you're kind of stopping and starting stopping and starting that can create air bubbles so just make sure it kind of pours in a steady stream all right so we're ready to go so I bring in my lamp let me bring this up just a little bit I bring in my lamp and I hit the button. So one press of the button runs this for one minute. So cure times are two, three, four minutes. It really depends on what you've put inside your resin. If you've put a very opaque color or a lot of glitter or a lot of things that are blocking the light, you're gonna wanna run it for three or four minutes just to make sure that that light can get around all of those things. Um, if you are curing in the sunlight, uh, on a sunny day, probably about five minutes in the sun. Actually curing in the sun is my preferred and favorite way of curing because no UV lamp can match like pure, beautiful rays of the sun. And I live in Southern California, so we have pretty great sun here year round. Um, and so that's how I prefer. I, I like if I'm crafting at night, I'll use the lamp and then maybe I'll put them in the sun for a few minutes in the morning. All right, so you can see that ran for a minute. I am gonna run it for another minute, but I just wanna show you here, let me pull this out. I wanna show you, I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm tappity tapping on this and it's hard, it's hardened already. It may not be cured all the way through but it's definitely hardened. Um, another tip for curing is you'll see if you, you watch any other tutorials online, you'll see people kind of flip the mold over and then cure it underneath. That is a great thing to do. And that works obviously because this is a clear mold. So I'm just gonna let that cure and get my findings ready. So these are the little findings that come inside that mold when you buy it. And so I, uh, a question came from Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. She asked, can the resin be over cured? Uh, in my experience, not really. Um, I've accidentally left things outside uh, for a whole day. And it, the only thing that that can do is it can kind of bleach out color. If you've added um, dye or if you've added things that are dyed, like dyed flowers, it might bleach some of the color out or change the color, but it's not really going to impact the resin itself. Now, if you've left something for many weeks in the sunlight, possibly you might get some yellowing. I've not tried that, um, but yeah, it's not really a problem over curing. Okay, so we have our finding here. And now these are the findings that are, like I said, they come in the mold. These findings, it's the same thing, it's just bigger. This is available for sale in the Michael's Jewelry department. This one I think is a 10 mm pad. This is a four mm pad. 
And so the 10 mm pads, here's what they look like when you buy them in stores. But not everything you're making has, um, you know, this type of surface area, certainly our butterfly doesn't. So this tiny little 4 mm one comes in handy. How thin can the resin be cured and be hard? Thank you for your question. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to answer that. When it pours out of the bottle, it is um, kind of semi-thick. Um, so I'm not sure how to answer that. I think maybe you mean with some additions that you've added to the resin. So I'm not sure, but thank you for your question. If you wanna clarify, I'll be on the lookout. Okay, so here are our butterflies. And this is the fun, satisfying part is popping them out of the mold. And you can see how easily that pops out. And so here's our little butterfly. One and two. Now, when these come out of the mold, they may be slightly tacky on the surface. Like if I put my finger, you can see it kind of sticks to me just a little bit. Um, that is normal with UV resin. And what you can do is you can cure it for extra or um, the, best, the best way to deal with surface tackiness is to put it in the sun for just a few minutes and then that is completely gone. So don't think you're doing something wrong if it still is slightly tacky. All right, so to add the finding, first I wanna decide what is my front and what is my back. So um, let's see, I like this front better. So let me turn that face down and I want to use the resin as an adhesive. So I just pour it directly from the bottle where I want to attach my finding right there, a little doll above it. And then I can take that flat pad and lay it down. Now I do want to make sure the resin kind of like comes over the edge and I want to make sure that it's centered. Sometimes it's easier going in with a stick for that part. All right, it's centered and we bring the light in. And then I just wanna make sure that the light is kind of getting all parts of it. All right, while that is curing, I'm gonna show you how to kick it up a notch design wise. So this, for this butterfly, we just use plain glitter. I wanted to keep it very um, beginner level. But for these examples, we have added dried flowers and look how cute these are. These are from Rosa Vergara. She is our in-house jewelry designer, so talented. And um, you can see how fun this is to play with. How gorgeous are these? All right, so those are butterflies also in the same mold. Here's the mold. We have, you know, lots of different shapes. So I have a couple other options to show you. Here's that leaf, oops, with a little bit of glitter in it. Here's the leaf with some gold flakes and tint in it. Those are fun. Um, and then here is our final. We can put the earring back on it as soon as I can find it. There it is, thank you. There's the little earring back. There you go. You have a custom pair of earrings that quickly. Love these. I'll give you another look at those. Okay, and that is our first project. So also we, um, here's another pair of silver stars that we did. All right, and we're gonna move on to our second project, which also uses glitter. And it is these little two-tone hoop earrings. Um, we had a qu question that just came up, is it more secure to use the UV resin as an adhesive instead of a glue? That's a great question, thank you. Um, UV resin is a wonderful adhesive because you are adhering basically plastic to metal. 
that can be kind of a tricky connection with things like crazy glue. Um, you really need a very strong adhesive to do plastic to metal. Um, and so there are wonderful jewelry adhesives out there. E6000 is, um, would, would make this connection very easily, but why buy an extra product? The UV resin makes a very, very strong connection. And I'm going to demonstrate that by pushing on this. So I'm just going to try to bend this. I'm trying, oh, I just, I, you saw how much force it took at first I <laughs> I bent this before it came off. So it is a very, very strong connection that's on there. And so I highly recommend using it as an adhesive. Um, the other benefit of using it as an adhesive, you know that it is, will dry completely clear. It won't um, mar your design and, um, and it dries in silly. Okay, so here's our two-tone hoop. So we are gonna want two different cups for that. All right, so we are gonna mix up some clear with glitter and also this beautiful kind of teal color. So I'm just pouring out about what I think I'll need. And then I'm gonna go in with my tints again. Now, these tints, as I said in the beginning, are very, very concentrated. In particular, this blue is extremely concentrated. So I'm going to put it actually on the side of the silicone bowl. And that way I can control bringing that into the color. So here we go. I'm going to dip my stick into that. And just that little bit, you can see how much that, oh, no. Ooh, here, I'm gonna scoop that out. Did you guys see what happened? Scoop it out, wipe it off. Here we go. See, just the tiniest little bit of that tent really goes to town. Bring a little more in. Okay. Now to get more of that teal color, I'm gonna add yellow. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, I saw nothing. Nothing happened there. Okay, a little bit of yellow on the side of that cup. And also same thing, I'm just gonna bring a tiny bit, still bringing this blue in. Yep, yeah, and that's all I needed of the yellow. In fact, it looks, um, oh, I like that color actually. It's kind of a very pretty tealy green. All right, and then more glitter. So I can add gold glitter here if I wanted it to match it to my gold findings. Um, but I just, I love this iridescent glitter because in the light, it kind of has a pink cast to it. I think that looks really pretty. All right, so there's my glitter. Okay, so that color's ready. And now on the other one, I'm just adding glitter. Okay. All right, so my colors are ready to go. And let me bring in my mold. Okay, let's put these to the side. Oh no, this is scooping in there. So let me scoop this out. All right, here's my mold. Um, a question came through, um, can you use any kind of glitter? Absolutely, you can use, um, what we're using is polyester glitter. That's the standard glitter. You can use metal glitter, glass glitter. Um, let me show you this item. This is our mega filler pack. This has different kinds of glitter for you to kind of try out. So you've got the flaky kind, more of a confetti kind, um, and then like typical fine glitters, some dried flowers, some polymer clay, and then some metal bits and some pearls. This is, these are really great, um, kind of a starter 
I'll show you this one too. This is kind of a non-traditional flaky glitter that works beautifully in UV resin. Okay, so here's the mold. This mold is exclusive at Michael's. You will not find this anywhere else. And this makes some really great earring shapes. So you can see we have these long bars and these two shapes can be used as like earring toppers. So you can just imagine the, these two shapes connected together. For these, obviously we're using this outer ring, but don't forget about this inner shape, which is its own mold, a little, little disc shape. And also another cool thing about molds is always look underneath your mold because you may find that there's an extra bonus shape down here. And that is over here, this little like kind of a pill shape. You can absolutely use the back of your mold to make that. Okay, so of this mold, we are going to give this an extra stir. All right, we're gonna try, I'm gonna show you this is like a double pour technique where we are gonna pour both colors at once. So I'm gonna start with the green here at the bottom. And then start pouring the other one. And they are gonna meet, obviously. And where they meet, they kind of start co-mingling on their own. What I can do is I can go in there and just, I don't know, make it like, if you want it to be more of a smooth transition between the clear and the green, I can kind of just, I don't know, make it a little more of an ombre. Same on the other one. And now I do see a couple bubbles in here. There's one right here. I'm gonna to try to pop it, and I did. Pop it, pop. Oh, this is like stress relaxing here, pop, pop. Um, and that's it. Again, I always like to pick up my molds and look underneath them. Just make sure that there are no air pockets where, where the resin didn't flow naturally. All right, and that's ready to cure it. You'll notice that I, I dropped some extra resin here on my mold. The easiest way to clean that up is just leave it and cure it and then it'll just peel right off like a sticker. Okay, so we are gonna let that cure. While that cures, I wanna show you some other examples. So this is, this is what we're making today, but I'm gonna show you some other things that we've done with the same mold. So in this one, we added some little sort of branchy, things and some gold flakes. And we did, we turned that into um, this modern Christmas hoop earring, not too early to start thinking about Christmas. So that's one example. Um, here we've just done other flakes. You can see how beautifully they shine. A question from Kathy, do you need to put something in the mold to keep the wire hole clear? Um, no, you don't. And let me show you one mold here. This is another mold of ours. This is a faceted gem shape. Okay, that went, I'm going to turn that on again. And the, what creates the holes at the top are these little like silicone pegs. And if I turn the mold to the side, you'll see that that peg extends beyond the edge of the mold about two millimeters. So that makes it really simple to keep that hole clear. So, you know, so that it, you'll, your piece will retain the hole after you pop it out of the mold. And I can show you some examples of that here. So here's a piece that we made and you can see how clear that, that hole is. And you need that because you're gonna obviously add a jump ring through there, maybe some cording through there. So no, you don't have to do anything extra. The, the, the resin should kind of fall over that little silicone peg. Okay, so more show and tell. Here is this look, beautiful like fiery kind of a look. This one, very interesting. This one, let me show you the back of it. 
the back is full gold glitter. And then the front is all different rainbow colors. All right, so also from that mold, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, let's run that one more time. Also from that mold, there are these kind of long shapes. And so I want to show you all of the different things that you can put inside resin. So let's see here. This is These are some flakes with a little metal piece at the bottom. We put some pearls. Here we did a glitter that's an ombre up to clear. And here we were just experimenting, like how many different things we can put down inside the shape. This is a piece of chain, some pearls. And here, this is obviously a Christmas earring, but we use some letter beads to spell out a word. You can spell out somebody's name, for example, here. Here's some more, these are faceted glass beads. These are candy sprinkles from the supermarket. How cute are those? These are tiny little um, micro beads that we did like kind of stacked. And then we did same technique of stacking with seed beads. Okay, and so those, those all came from this, this shape here. All right, so this is ready to pop out. Um, one thing I wanna tell you is while it's curing, a chemical reaction is happening that does create heat. So when I pick this up, it is a little bit warm. It's always good to let that cool for a minute or two before you pop out, especially any like thin shapes, because when it's warm, that resin is still kind of a little bit warm and you don't wanna warp it at all. But this has cooled enough and you can see just by popping, the bottom that it really just comes out very easily. So here's my shape. And you can see here at the bottom, I have a little extra little nubbin of resin. And I wanna show you what to do if that happens. So you can come in with your clippers, your little snipping tools and just snip that off. If you have any rough edges, you can come in with an emery board. I always like to use my emery board wet. So here I just dipped it in some water and I can kind of, you know, any, anything that's a rough edge, I can just kind of scrape off that way. You want to work with it wet just because you don't want to breathe in resin dust. So the wet sanding really helps with that. Okay, so here is the top hole. It's hard to see because it's unclear, but that's where the top hole is. You can see on the back of my hole, it looks like I also have a little bit of extra resin so I can come in and just kind of clip there too, or use my emery board, you know. But I think that is looking good. And so I need to turn it into jewelry. So we have to add all of these metal parts. So I need a jump ring actually two jump rings and move all of this up so I can stay in the frame. Two jump rings and an ear wire. All right, first the larger jump ring. So when you're working with jump rings, um, you wanna use pliers. Thank you. All right, so here's my jump ring. And I want to situate the pliers on either side of the break in the jump ring. I'll turn it this way so you can see. And then one comes toward me and one goes away from me. That's how you open it. And then string it right through that hole that the mold made. And then you close it in the opposite direction. Okay, but oh, before we close it, I'm going to add my next jump ring, which is a small one. All right, so now this small one, same thing. I wanna find the end of it, open it up. Now you don't need a second jump ring. What this second jump ring does, every jump ring that you add is perpendicular to the one before it. So you can add a jump ring if you want to turn the way the earring will fall on your face. So you see by adding that second jump ring, it's allowing this ear wire to face that way. 
if I didn't have that second jump ring, the ear wire would, wouldn't be able to turn as easily on there. So that's why we added two. And there's our earrings. All right, what is next here? Let me move these off to the side. Um, let's see. Okay, so next we're going to be using this little heart. Before we do that, I have some show and tell of other things that came out of this mold. Um, so here, this shape we use to make wreaths. We love to make Christmas jewelry. You can see this is a wreath. We added some pearls. This ribbon we attached just by using the UV resin as an adhesive. Um, I want to show you this shape. So this shape combined with this shape. So you can, you can see how you can, this is like a very mix and matchy type of a mold. So if I add these two shapes together, I can get something like this, which I've just attached with a jump ring. And I, again, I used a earring post on that one. Um, now this one is really fun guys. I don't know. We might end up doing a class on something like this, but we took this shape and this shape and look what we made this little avocado guy. So we just molded each shape separately and then attached them together. Drew a little face on there with Sharpie and added some little sea bead legs. And I'll show you how those legs are attached. Just with more UV resin, we didn't want to have to drill holes in here and add jump rings. We just glued them on the back, basically. How cute is that? So you can see how versatile just this one mold is. All righty. So what are we doing next here? We are doing the heart earrings. And this one, this I'm just going to show you really quickly. But basically, it's just three of the same, three of the same um, heart shape. And also, I'm going to show you this. So this is the cup that I just used to make the previous earring. I had this put off to the side. You can see just even though it's off to the side, it started curing. So a note of caution, if you are mixing up a color, and you want to save it, make sure that that UV light is not hitting it because you'll get something like this. So I'm just gonna scoop that out because I wanna reuse this cup. Okay, so here's my cup. It still has a little bit of that color in there. I'm gonna add a little more. Sorry, just a second, allergy break. Okay, um, and we're gonna fill this heart shape. Now, again, I can use dried flowers here. I can use a lot of different things to fill. Oh, my hand is covering that whole thing. I'm so sorry, but I just filled that in there. And I just like to poke at it to make sure that there are no air bubbles trapped at the bottom. And then we cure it. All right, so once that pops out, I basically do that three times so that I can get three different colors of hearts. And then we just attach them with jump rings. So I'm gonna move this up, let that cure. And I'm gonna show you the process. So we use these extra large jump rings. You need three of them. Okay, thank you for your question, Lisa. Um, Anne-Marie, let me know. I couldn't read all of the question. 
but there's let me know if uh, you need me on that one. Sure, there's a lot of questions coming in today. All right, I'm ready. It's the perfect <laughs> um, time for questions as I just kind of put this together. Sure, um, cleaning the resin. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? And if there's some resin left over, what can you do with it? Okay. All right. So let me see here. Okay. So cleaning your molds. Is that the question? Cleaning the molds? Yeah. Mold cup, you know, just cleaning up okay. as you go. Yep. Okay, so, and I'll show you here. Here's the cup that I used earlier with the pink color in it. You can see that that is like mostly cured already. Not all the way, because it was sitting about, I don't know, eight inches off to the side. If you have any left in your cup, you can just cure it. That's the easiest way to clean it is just to cure it because then it can pop right out. So as I cure my heart shape, I, I just added that cup under there to share the light as I'm connecting these three shapes together. So here I've made a chain of hearts just by using jump rings. And then I can attach my ear wire to the top. And with big jump rings, you don't need to get in there with two tools. You can just kind of hold one. That's the beauty of using big jump rings. All right, but here's our heart earring. Okay, so back to clean up. So I like to cure what's in the cup under the light. And that way I can just do this and just pop it right out. So easy cleanup. If you have any glitter that's left, the best way to do that is with a piece of tape. Um, you know how you get lint off your clothes. I don't have a piece of tape here, but, um, and just kind of the tape will get those little pieces of glitter up. So that's clean up. Um, this little piece, um, you know, you could go in with some scissors. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Rosa brought me tape. We'll do a little cleaning demo demonstration here. Piece of tape and just use that to pick that glitter up. You can see it already cleaned that edge. Um, my scissors went away, but what you can do if you have scissors, you can cut apart this shape. Oh, and that went flying across the room, but you can cut the shape apart and then put it down inside the mold to make more of a PC kind of look, like, like a broken kind of mosaic look. Okay, so yeah, you can absolutely use resin um, that is left in your cup. All right, here is my heart. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so here is the next set of earrings. Now these are made with our hoop mold. Here's the mold. So these shapes came out of this area here. So you can see it has two different sizes and then also a little shape here to make stud earrings. So let me show you the two different sizes for references here. I'll put them on my hand so you can kind of see. This one's about a two inch. This one's about an inch and a quarter. Very wearable sizes. And for these, we use dried flowers. Um, so we use these kind of like dried, dyed baby's breath. So I'm gonna use this red color. And then we also used this lace flower, I believe, let me look at it. Yeah, that color there. Um, the question, thank you, can you use a heat gun to pop the bubbles like you do for two-part resin? Yes, you absolutely can. That you, you can do that. You'll find that you don't really need to do that. Another question from Susie, can you use fresh flowers? And um, no, you cannot. The flowers have to be dried or preserved because they need the moisture to be taken out of them first. 
if you use a fresh flower and resin, it will look beautiful to begin with, but in a few weeks as that flower um, decomposes, it will turn gross inside there and you don't want that. So always make sure you're using dried or preserved flowers. All right, so these are the flowers that I'm using. Let me open this up. These are extremely delicate. So you want to be careful using them. And then I'm going to go in with some scissors or my snipper. There we go. And then I'm going to cut these apart. Now you can use this whole flower as one unit, or you can cut it into kind of flower confetti is like how I like to describe it. So I'm just cutting this into all these different little bits. Um, a question from Lynn, how did I poke the previous earring um, to make the hole in it? So that hole was made just from the mold. Let me show you the mold again. Where did I put it? Here it is. So here was that shape. You can see it has this little peg in it. So that peg creates the hole. So if there was not a hole where you want a hole to be, we also sell a little hand drill. So if we have time, I'll demonstrate how this hand drill works. Thank you. <laughs> Allergy season, okay. Um, all right, so we have our flowers. We need our red, our red flowers. So I'm just gonna open this up. Pull some out here. I'm also going to snip these off. Okay. All right, and we have our mold this way. And we go straight in with the clear resin. And I'm gonna fill it almost the whole way. So you can see, I'm gonna bring this up close, really not a lot of bubbles. There's, a, well, there's one here and I'm gonna to try to either pop it or just grab it, which I did. Um, there's one here on this corner, like down inside. So I can kind of just get that out. But yeah, bubbles really aren't that much of an issue. Um, you just want to be aware of them. Okay, and so now we're going to start adding our flowers. So you to do that, you want to dip the tip of your stick into a little wet resin. And then you can use that to kind of just pick these flowers up very easily and place them where you want them to go. And so as I'm placing them, I'm keeping in mind that I want them to be at different depths or maybe the same depth because you've got about, um, about a quarter of an inch of depth here to work with. So a little, there's a little bubble right there. Let me bring him out, okay? Um, question came through, can you reuse the um, sticks for future res resin. Absolutely. That's why I like to keep a paper towel here to wipe them off with. Um, if you don't wipe them off and then it gets near the light, then it'll kind of cure on there. All right. One more. This guy here. Okay. And now my light blue turquoise color. I'm going to show you a lot of examples of other flowers that we've used and other hoop shapes that are available. And I can, uh, you know, the great thing about UV resin is you have a lot of playtime. I can really spend a lot of time here and get each of these elements placed exactly where I want them to be. 
I can really take my time. This thing isn't going to start curing until I want it to. Okay. All right. And now I'm just going to make sure that this is filled to the top. And it's ready to cure. So bring in my light in. All right, and I'm gonna let that go. And let me show you some other hoop earrings that we've done. So we love glitter. So here are some really glittery fun ones. Um, this is more of an ombre glitter, goes from gold to clear. And this one we used leaves and gold flakes together. I like that mixture of kind of the natural and the glittery. Um, this one, we did not add the finding onto it yet, but we used some letter beads to spell out a word. Um, and this, we just used some yellow little flowers. This one, we used some holographic letters that don't spell anything. They're just kind of in there. A question from Michelle, can you bezel the edge of the resin? Um, bevel, bevel the edge of the resin. Um, you can drill, you can use a, like a Dremel drill to create different surface um, shapes on resin, that one, one minute, let's do that again. But I'm gonna show you how, once these come out of the mold, I'm gonna show you um, what I would suggest to do. Oops, here's another really pretty one with some pink flowers. And then we have different hoop shapes. We've also got this mold, which makes a heart-shaped hoop, and then also a flat. These both come in the same mold. This one, beautiful. I mean, it, you would expect to see something like this in a high-end boutique and you could make it at home in literally five minutes. You can make this earring. All right, so let me get my findings ready. So I have this, I have my earring back. Thank you so much for everyone who's still with me. While I'm waiting for this to clear, um, to cure, I am going to ask for you oh, there we go, to post your creations. If you try this out, we would love to see what you make. And so if you post it to social media, to Instagram, Facebook, use the hashtag UV Resin Craft. I check that hashtag personally. I love to see your creativity. Also, anything you make using products bought at Michaels, use the hashtag make it with Michaels. And you can connect with me personally on Instagram at Stephanie Menor Creates. All right, so now this has gone for two minutes and I can feel that it's pretty warm. And then I just wanna kind of loosen it and then pop it out. Well, this one is still a little bit tacky. You can see it lifts up when I touch it. So I just wanna hit it with a little more light or like I said earlier, put it in the sunlight. All right, so we are going to actually turn that off and I'm gonna show you how to add the post. So again, with more resin. What I can do is I can put a little dollop of resin. And again, I'm using this, this is a silicone mat down here. So I can do things like this. You would not wanna do that on your work surface, your desk, but on silicone is fine. So, so what I like to do is take the earring back here, which is included with your purchase of this mold, by the way, I'll show you what it looks like. And just kind of dip it in that liquid resin and then place it here. And then you want to kind of balance it and place it exactly where you want. And that is about right. And then I bring the light to it. 
and lock that in place. And I just have to hold this for the first maybe, you know, 15 to 20 seconds until it grabs and then I can set it down. I did see a question come through about hard and soft resin. And we do make both. All of these projects that we've made here today use the hard type resin. So what that means is it just cures to a hard plastic like finish. We also sell soft type resin. If you uh, can grab me, I wanna show you what that looks like. The difference is that soft resin cures to a gummy bear consistency. So here's our soft resin. So that's called out right there. Hard resin is the classic UV resin. That's what, you know, 80% of projects are made from. But having a soft resin really opens up the possibility to do different things. For example, if you're making a bracelet, it opens up the possibility of making a bracelet that can bend. Um, so because obviously this can't bend but soft resin allows you to make bendy things. Okay, so here's our hoop and it's kind of hard to see, but I overfilled the mold a little bit and you have these little dangly nubbins there and I'm just gonna clip those off. Just know that it's not a deal breaker. If something comes out of the mold slightly funky, you can fix it. There are some other little nubbins over here that I will clip off. And like I said earlier, if I have any um, kind of areas that are sharp, I can go in with an emery board or you can dome the resin on top of it. And so on the back, this is the back of the, the earring. I can, if I'm careful, I can take a very small bead of UV resin onto the top of that. This, this just finishes it off very professionally. And I can kind of spread that out and then cure it again. And that just makes the back of the earring just really smooth and very, very professional. All right, we just have a couple minutes left um, if you have any questions, ask them now, but we, as soon as this cures for a minute, I think we're going to sign off. Um, please join us back here um, on michaels.com. Look at their online classes. We're doing these classes every two weeks or so. We have some amazing classes coming up for Halloween projects. You would not believe the cute things you can make for Halloween with this with this product. Um, we have some amazing Christmas classes coming up. So make sure to sign up um, and be on the lookout for any upcoming UV resin classes. Also, this class is recorded. If you wanna go back and watch something, this will be up on the Michaels YouTube. If you wanna rewatch any of that, And here is our final earring. And so all I have to do is put the little earring back onto it. And there we go. All right, guys, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you so much for joining. And we hope to see you in a future class. And I hope that you try it out. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>